What's up everybody? You're watching Model Aviator. I'm Adam and this week we have an interesting kind of a special review episode. It's a guest review. This is my buddy Dustin. Yeah. Dustin, thanks for showing up, man. I appreciate you bringing this thing mm -hmm. over. This is Dustin's plane. He did everything, the assembly, the setup, and we caught him flying it. So it's pretty much going to be his review. I'm just going to kind of talk him through it since he's not used to doing reviews. <laughs> so just start with the quality of the parts, the fit and the finish, the assembly. Overall, I can't complain much there. Everything went together pretty well. Uh, I did it all straight for the manual and had no real issues. All the wires were very well labeled. I mean, there's a lot of wires in this thing for all the features it has, and they're all well labeled. They all went in, they fit. Um, the built-in stabilizer kind of takes most of the programming away from the radio, and we can talk about that a little bit. Um, this airplane, obviously, it can run on up to nine channels as you've got your uh, elevons back there, which are automatically mixed to the ailerons per the stabilizer that comes or with it. Tailorons, basically. Yeah. yeah. Um, you've got swing wing, you've got flaps, you've got gear, uh, rudder, obviously, and uh, also reverse thrust, plus a, uh, the stabilizer can be set to auto level, um, stabilize mode, or off. So if you have a nine channel receiver, you can do all of that. And all of those things are just plug them into the receiver, pick a switch, and you're good to go, basically. Uh, maybe a little bit of minor travel adjustment here and there. All right. But uh, very, very straightforward setup for as many features as it has. Yeah, and you just, yeah, you basically covered the setup. So yeah. assembly and setup, you would say anybody that has enough skill to fly this airplane, following the instructions is not going to have a problem getting it assembled and getting it yeah. set up. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, yeah, if you've built any kind of other EDF jets of this sort of, um, feature list, it should be no problem. And so you have the 80, yep. the twin, the Freewing Twin 80. Mm. That is a good bit different as far as setup? Yeah, the, that one does not have a built-in mixer, uh, so all the mixes had to be done individually here, and that is kind of a pain on that airplane, honestly. Um, I'll, I'll talk about one in particular because it's interesting. The, the one that prevents your flaps from getting damaged when the wings go back by accident. So this one has an automatic feature where you, it will not allow you to have the flaps down when the wings go back, which is great because it prevents you from breaking your flaps if you, you know, forget your flaps are down and pull the wings back. The only downside of that, and it's not really a downside, it's just something to watch out for, is if you were to take off with your flaps down and also have the switch for your wings to this position, uh, the wings won't move, but as soon as you take off and pull the flaps up, the wings will move. So you could very well be doing a climb out and suddenly, if you had your switch in the wrong spot, suddenly you're in delta mode here, which would, might be a little bit awkward on takeoff. Right. Um, Although, this does have, when it comes to flight characteristics, this does have a lot of power. You've got some numbers to share on this thing. Actually, don't you? yeah. Yeah, I did the math on it because I was curious because, like I said, I also have the 80, and I know the 80 is known to be a bit underpowered. Um, this one's got about 25% more uh, watts per pound, just, you know, thrust per weight than the 80 does, and it's got about a 10% lower wing loading, which, the two of those put together, you can notice a real significant difference when you're flying. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, and you did you did most of the flying. I only I, I got to fly it once, and my impression was that I like this better than the eighty. Yeah. And as you well know, you know the standard rule in RC is bigger flies better, and ninety nine percent of the time that is true. In this case, yeah. I think this flies better than the eighty, and I would rather have it than the eighty. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, I do think it has way more power. It, you have a lot more. Uh, a lot more wiggle room if you do something dumb in the air because you do have the power to get out of it with this one. Uh, it's also a whole lot easier to transport, only one battery, um, much more convenient overall. And what are the battery sizes? I've been I've been flying a 4000 uh, 6L only because that's the main ones I have that'll fit this. You can also fly a 5000, potentially up to a 6000, I haven't tried that yet. Uh, so I don't know how much additional flight time you would get, but I get about three minutes on a 4000. Which is, to me, not bad for a twin a twin engine jet of this size. Right. And you could probably eke four out of it with a 5,000. Yeah, I would think so. I don't think you'd have to go to it. I don't know that I'd want to put something as heavy as a six in there, but I'm of course, I'm sure you're going to try yeah, it. Yeah, I'll anyway. try it at some point. We'll find out. Right. <laughs> right. So, when it comes to skill level, as far as flying this airplane, I mean, clearly this is not a first EDF for most people. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody really, really experienced that just has never flown an EDF could start with this, but otherwise, yeah. there are better beginner jets, would you say? Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah, there's there's a lot of better beginner jets. It flies very well for a, a, a fighter jet. Um, the only things I noted in the air that I had to be a little bit careful with, 
uh, was on landing honestly it, it doesn't like to land slow and it doesn't like to do a really long high alpha with the wings out uh, if you get much higher than about that it's going to want to lose speed really quick and that's eventually going to pancake or drop a wing but again that's all predictable you just kind of have to keep that in mind keep a little bit of power and speed on when you come in and it should land fine right and it's got a really nice LED set which you'll see in the flying and it comes with some underwing stores. Tell us about those. Yeah, it looks like they, they came with uh, two Phoenixes, two Sparrows, and two Sidewinders. They, uh, the mounts here actually screw on, so these would go on you know, semi-permanently. And then the missiles themselves just pop off with your normal little clips there. That is convenient. So it, it's, I think it's pretty well designed, honestly. Yeah, I, I like the idea of being able to take the rails off if you want it really clean. Yeah. Yeah, and I was wondering, I wonder if maybe Oh no, they're not showing the. What's the guy that just just passed away, in a in a stole? He crashed a stole plane no. because the stick was no, was not, locked in the seat. Yeah. yeah, he used to do uh, a really cool demo in an F-14 at air shows. Mm -hmm. Was he a single when he did that? No, he was not. I I don't know of okay. any instances where the Navy ever flew these things without the Rio in the back. Which is interesting that they didn't include a Rio in the back. Right. Uh, oddly, they did include the, there's two holes where you would screw a Rio in. So it seems like that was just a purely an oversight. Uh, maybe future, I think they alluded, some of the Motion RC uh, guys alluded that then maybe the next version would have that once they corrected that. <laughs> Hopefully. Right. In the meantime, maybe I'll put something something stupid in there. Who knows? Right. Are there, is there anything else about the airplane other than not having a Rio that you want to point out? Maybe yeah. a little pet peeve or something? Yeah. There? Overall, everything was great. The only minor things, uh, the tail hook is made out of foam, as you can see. So if you are <laughs> like me and pull it out of the truck by grabbing right between the engines, that will immediately break off, as it did for me. <laughs> um, that seems like that could have been made out of plastic, but not a huge deal. Uh, the only other thing that I thought was a little bit different, uh, what the book does tell you to program some uh, up elevator into the uh, the flaps mix. Basically, you know, flaps go down, elevators go up just a little bit. Uh, I had seen some stuff on the internet that said that wasn't a good idea, so I didn't do it. And I agree, it flew great without doing that. I don't think it needs it from my point of view. Yeah. So that that was really the only deviation I did to the stock setup in here. Yeah. Um, but that's both of those complaints are really pretty minor. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, that that's I had to get him to nitpick to come up with that. Yeah. But so when it comes to flying, we're going to show you Dustin's maiden flight and then a performance flight that he did maybe two or three flights later. Yeah. Heidi caught both of those. Really good flying airplane. My my take on it, I flew it once. I agree that you need to know how to use power and elevator at the same time to get this thing to flare and land. Mm -hmm. And even though it, it comes in, it's not that hot. It doesn't no, come it's... in that hot, but you just need to modulate power and elevator yeah. to be able to land this thing successfully. No, I've, I've flown some EDFs that are like very difficult to get it to land on our 400 foot runway. Mm -hmm. This is not one of them. This one, as long as yeah. you bring it in reasonably well, you don't necessarily have to hit the numbers. Even without the reverse thrust, you can get it stopped. It's not it's not crazy, yeah. But you do have to keep an eye on it. Yeah, yeah. And as far as the power, listening to the numbers that you gave, mm -hmm. it seems even more powerful than that compared yeah. to the eighty. Yeah, the, I agree. The, the eighty just it it just seems underpowered, and this has more than enough, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. This one this one flies very very well. I think it has a more than adequate power for what it is. Yep, and we both agree we'd prefer this over the 80 if we had to choose. Yeah, so, 80s are pretty plain. This one's a lot more convenient and flies better. Yeah, that's saying something. Yeah. Well, with that, man, I appreciate you bringing this thing by yeah. and taking the time to do this. I know they appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And we'll get to the flying. Check this out. I think the initial climb rate took Dustin by surprise. Obviously, on a maiden flight, it's not a bad idea to go ahead and get some altitude quickly.
Dustin's doing a stall test now. This is clean. Pretty benign. Bear in mind, he's fighting it a bit. He also wants to see what it takes to recover if it does stall, so I don't think he's letting it completely drop out. He's certainly not holding it in it. And it's pretty much the same story. Dirty. Pretty benign stall characteristics, and if you stay with it, getting out of it, or maybe I should say not getting all the way in it, is pretty simple. This is not a bad first landing at all. There's clearly more thrust to weight ratio than the 80. That's Dustin's first time sweeping the wings. At this point, Dustin's really got the hang of landing it. He's going to grease this one. To be fair, I don't think the nose gear is anywhere near as bouncy as it appears. It's obviously a light spring, but our runway is super bumpy. Okay, so you just saw Dustin on the sticks, did a great job of flying this airplane. Dude, you're a good pilot. You, Appreciate it. You are. <laughs> I, I have a lot of 
respect for Dustin's skill set. So the price point is four ninety nine, I yep, think. I believe so. And in my opinion, that's a great price for what you get. Would you agree? Yeah, I, I think so. It, it is a little pricey for a two sixty four, but twin sixty four. That being said, it's full featured. You've got nine channels worth of stuff. It's a Tomcat, the wing swing. There's a lot to make that happen in an RC airplane. Right. I think it's completely reasonable given what you're getting. Yeah, yeah. Well, we are going to put a link in the description where you can check this out at Motion RC. They are out of stock right now, but we'll put a link if you want to check it out anyway, and you can read all the stats and all that stuff. It's a really good airplane, man. Thanks again for stopping yeah, by no and problem. showing us this, and I think appreciate you letting me fly it. Yeah. We may have another video on this at some point. You never know what this guy's going to do <laughs> with an F-14, so it could get interesting in the future. All right. Yep. All right. Take care, guys. Happy flying. We'll see you next week with something cool with wings.